All right, I'm gonna talk now about the countercurrent exchange and why is that important. So when we think about countercurrent exchange, the first thing that must come in, must come into mind is the vasa recta. So the vasa recta are these flat capillaries that are present in the medulla of the kidneys, so of the, of the nephron. Where we have the cortex, which is the outer side, medulla is the inside. So you have a lot of these vasa rectas. So vasa recta is a blood capillary. And so if you notice here, from before, afferent arterioles, so afferent arterioles come from which structure? From the glomerulus, come in, surround, or they're very proximal to the loop of Henle, and they exit everything from the vein. So what's really important about the vasa recta, it is very proximal to the loop of Henle. What was loop of Henle responsible for in terms of osmotic gradient? As you remember before, they're responsible for the countercurrent multiplier, where they allow for the reabsorption, the passive reabsor uh, reabsorption of water into the extracellular fluid, or the active transport, where the potassium, sodium, and chlorine in the ascending in the ascending loop of Henle comes into the extracellular fluid. Right. So the vasa recta and the loop of Henle work side by side. The Vasa recta now is called the countercurrent exchange because the whole purpose of it is to maintain the integrity of the renal medulla in order to be very, very concentrated, right? So we're looking at the concentration and volumes of urine. So during urine formation, this needs to be maintained in order to maintain the osmolarity of the renal medulla. So how does it happen? Well, it's pretty simple. When we look at the descending, or we can call it the efferent arterioles, so you have the oxygenated blood, that's why I have it in pink. And this region, efferent arteriole, is side by side with the descending loop of Henle. That's why I have this in the same structure. So the efferent arteriole is the sort of the same as in terms of in parallel with the descending loop of Henle. So it goes down, all right? And so what happens here? So if you remember in the descending loop of Henle, what happens? So there's a lot of salt being reabsorbed in the extracellular fluid. And so water begins to move passively into the extracellular fluid. So here, if you remember during filtration, reabsorption, secretion, when we talked about reabsorption, eventually it goes from the renal system to the extracellular fluid and eventually to the blood. So this is how the salt re-enters the blood. So here in the vasa recta region, you have the sodium chloride being reabsorbed back into the bloodstream, which eventually leaves out the body. And you have more water coming out of the afferent arterial here of the vasa recta. This whole region is the vasa recta. All right. And so what does that happen? Why does it do that? Well, if you remember, there's a high presence of a lot of salt in the extracellular fluid after proper reabsorption in the, dis in the proximal convoluted tubule. So from the proximal convoluted tubule, if you remember, we have sodium and potassium reabsorption. So you have a lot of this in the extracellular space or in the extracellular fluid. So further diluting down is the reason why we have more water coming in in order to dilute this salt. So we remove salt from the extracellular fluid and we add more water to increase dilution. But if you remember, the renal medulla is supposed to be high, have high osmolarity. So how does it do this? Well, on the other region here, now as we begin to connect to the, to the venules eventually becoming the vein, there are these specific regions where we have this gradient. So what's really important about this, this structure too? Vasa recta, specifically the afferent arterioles in the veins, unlike the loop of Henle, the vasa recta is permeable to sodium, potassiums, urea. So urea is this metabolite created in the liver that gets, is one of the main components of urine, and also water. So again, chlorines, two other ions as well. There's multiple, but again, just generally for this. So they're very permeable to not only ions, but also water. So if you remember from the descending 
and ascending loop of handling, descending was only permeable to water, whereas the ascending was only permeable to salts. Here, it's not the case. In the vasa recta, not the case. So anything can move in passively. So it's both cases are a passive process based off of the different gradients that are created, okay? And so the amount of salt, right, whatever salt we're looking at specifically, allows for the movement of the specific water, all right, here. Now, after you have this complete dilution in the first region here of the, of the, for example, we're looking at the descending loop of Henle, now there's a, a, a problem with the gradient. So now more salt needs to be secreted into the extracellular fluid, all right? So from the blood, you have in the vein region now, so the venules and the vein should become the vein, you have a lot of this sodium chloride that is secreted into the extracellular fluid to maintain that high osmolarity of the renal medulla. So remember, renal medulla is supposed to be very, very salty. And again, just in order to enhance this, water now become, gets reabsorbed back into the blood system, and then everything goes out, specifically the vein. So this is an example of the countercurrent exchange that takes place in the vasa recta.